If you're not a Jew, that is of the Hebrew, Israelite nation, then you are a Gentile. Who is a Gentile? How many men did Jesus send out before him? After these things the Lord appointed seventy others also, and sent them two by two before his face, into every city and place where he himself was about to go. How many men did Jesus send out before him? When we come to the New Testament, we find that the Lord Jesus, when sending out missionaries, sent out 70. Why 70? Number of completeness, number of perfection. All the nations rebelled and they were replaced by the nation of Israel, temporarily. But God's design was to work through Israel, to bring the promised seed. And when the promised seed came to live, and to die, and to be resurrected, the wheel would be turned full circle, and God would then go back out, to those nations those rebellious nations that had rejected him, with the great commission, to restore them. What is the great commission? And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. What is the Great Commission? God hasn't given up on the nations of the world. He hasn't written them off. He has not turned his back on them. He says, Go, and make disciples of all nations. All seventy. The nations that rebelled. Are the nations, that are to hear the gospel. This has already been hinted at. In Genesis. Because, when God zoomed in with his camera on Abraham and his family, there was still a universal aspect to it. Abraham was chosen, so that salvation would come from a sovereign, gracious God, to the whole, world. What did God promise Abraham? In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. What did God promise Abraham?
in you, all the families of the earth, shall be blessed. How beautiful this is! From the very moment, when God is selecting one man to be his, he says, as it were. Abraham. Rebellious humanity, has deserted me, and I'm going to focus now, on you and your seed. And I'm going to bring the promised seed into the world. And in you, all these nations of Genesis 10, shall be blessed. Abraham. I still have all the nations of the world, in mind. I'm narrowing my focus to you. So that, in the fullness of the time of the coming of my son, the focus will once again, be wide. He will save his people, from their sins, and the gospel will spread abroad, throughout the earth. And today. You see God's camera, on every nation of the world. He calls every nation and tribe and people, to bow the knee, before King Jesus. God changes Abram's name to Abraham. What does Abraham mean? No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be, Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. God changes Abram's name to Abraham. What does Abraham mean? God changes Abram's name to Abraham, which means father of many nations. So that at the very heart of the existence of the Jewish people is this universal, worldwide mission calling to the Gentiles. Wrapped up in Abraham's very name is the New Testament. Wrapped up in his name is the Great Commission. Wrapped up in his name is the gospel. Father of many, nations. Now the problem was that Israel forgot that over the centuries. They forgot that they were to be a blessing to all the peoples of the earth. They forgot the meaning of their father's name. And they became narrow, and introverted. Their faith became proud and they became self-centered. They viewed rebellious humanity around them, as unsatisfactory and having no use. They saw themselves as replacement humanity. But they didn't lift up their eyes, to see God's vision, that their replacement, was only temporary, and that one day, it would be restored humanity. So God takes time, in Genesis 10, to write down as it were, the list of the peoples to whom Abraham and his seed will be a blessing. God gives us, a summary of humanity that will be restored, by the seed, of the woman. And so the missionary responsibility of the church today, is catalogued in Genesis 10, before we even come to the establishment of the chosen people. Sing and rejoice, O daughter, of Zion. For behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people. And I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts, has sent me, to you.